Let's talk about creating a handmade wardrobe today. I'm going to share my own story with you, why I started making my own clothing and also talk about some practical tips when you want to start creating a handmade wardrobe of your own. Hi, I'm Annika. I'm a natural yarn dyer and an avid knitter and I also like to sew, crochet, embroider, spin, everything related to the fiber arts. Essentially, my dream of creating a handmade wardrobe started back in 2015. When my daughter was born, I started thinking more about sustainability and what kind of values I wanted to convey to her. I picked up my knitting needles again and taught myself how to sew and slowly but surely started to create a handmade wardrobe, not only for myself but also for her. We made a number of changes back then to our lives in order to become more sustainable and to live a more intentional life and one of the major changes for me was that I founded my company Rosemary and Pines Fiber Arts to convey these values to others as well. If you're not familiar with my company yet, I'm going to link some additional information on my website for you. You can find it in the description box below. In short, I naturally dye yarn that I sell in my Etsy shop and I also educate and inspire others when it comes to natural dyeing as well as creating a handmade wardrobe. Before we get started with the tips of how to create a handmade wardrobe, I want to put like some kind of a little disclaimer. You absolutely do not have to make clothing yourself if you are not interested in this topic. You can have a natural and sustainable wardrobe that is not handmade. As always, it makes sense to just simply purchase less clothing, focus on owning pieces that you enjoy wearing and that you feel comfortable in and truly wear them out. Wear them as much as possible, as long as possible until they are not um, at, this, at a state where they are going to be able to be mended anymore. And if you want to purchase additional clothing for you, you can always look for secondhand options. But even if you want to buy something new, you can still do so in a sustainable way. You can research the companies, the clothing companies that you want to buy from. You can support small businesses with your purchases. You can consider the fiber that your clothes are made out of. So go for natural fibers whenever possible. And you can also consider where the clothing is made to avoid transporting over long distances. For example, the clothing that I'm wearing today is not completely handmade either. The cardigan I did make myself out of Newtiden yarn in the colorway Liv's Linear. And the pattern is the timepiece cardigan by Mm, I think Ibiona McLaughlin. I'm going to put the name on the screen for you so that you can see. And I'm also going to link the pattern as well as the yarn in the description box. But what I wanted to say was this is not a completely handmade outfit and this is totally fine. The dress that I'm wearing is from a company called Old Linen Mill. I purchased it on Etsy. It is a small business that I intentionally decided to support and the dress is made out of 100% Lithuanian linen, which is a European country somewhat close to me. All right, where should you start when you want to create a handmade wardrobe? The first step is do not get overwhelmed. I know the feeling very well that you make this decision to start creating a handmade wardrobe and your um, first initial reaction is that you want to throw everything out that's not handmade and start from scratch. However, this is not very practical and you just have to come to terms with the fact that creating a handmade wardrobe 
takes time and that is totally fine. It can take years and you might not ever get to the point where everything in your wardrobe is handmade and that's completely fine as well. So the next step if you have done this mindset shift is to start decluttering. Go through your wardrobe piece by piece, lay everything out and have a look, a close look at what you have in your wardrobe, what you like to wear, what you rarely wear or never wear. And I'm sure, uh, as we all know, there are always pieces in anyone's wardrobe that do not get enough wear. So identify those pieces and declutter them first. You can always donate them or give them away to someone else who is going to enjoy them. I'm going to link a decluttering video from the Minimal Mom for you, which I found very helpful when I decluttered my own wardrobe. Next, you should have a very close look at the pieces you wear most often. For example, if you really would like to sew or knit some dresses, but you mainly wear pens on a day-to-day -day basis, this is not going to be a practical wardrobe, although it's going to be handmade. You should really consider the current state of life you're in and also think about the climate you live in. I get the feeling that you really like all those warm, cozy sweaters, but if you live in a climate where you do not experience a true winter season, it probably doesn't make sense to knit up a whole bunch of warm sweaters. The next step I'm going to call setting the framework. For me, I then, after decluttered everything, started looking at the colors I like to wear and also the colors that suit me best. With that being said, I didn't have a official professional color analysis done, but I did look at some resources um, on the internet. I'm going to link a website for you that you simply upload your picture and um, put a couple of stats and then they are going to do the color analysis for you if this is something that interests you. For me personally I find this very interesting and since I intentionally own not a lot of clothing I want my clothes all to go together with regard to color. So I identified myself as a summer type, a true or classic summer to be exact. I'm not sure if this is right, but luckily the colors for the summer are the colors that I gravitate towards anyway. They are muted shades with a gray undertone and go into the hues of pinks, blues, greens, grays. Another important point that I want to mention here is that you absolutely do not have to wear what suits you best if you don't want to. Personally I think it's very fun and I'm interested in it but if you want to wear all the colors and whatever you desire on a particular day that's totally fine as well. As women we are often told that we have to look a certain way or dress a certain way to be as attractive as possible and I do not want to promote this here in this video. Wear whatever makes you feel comfortable and whatever makes you feel good in. And if this happens to be one of the colors that suits you, that's good. And if not, that's fine as well. Let's talk a little bit more about the mindset shift that I already mentioned. I like to phrase this as start simple, but simply start. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Accept the fact that this is not a shift that's going to come overnight. It will take some time and that's fine. That's part of the joy of owning a handmade wardrobe because you get to create it yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself if you are not an experienced knitter or seamstress. You do not have to make everything from the start. Choose a simple garment style that you know you are going to wear and like and just start from, from there. For example, I would personally not start making like a coat or a jacket. I've actually never done both of these things so far. 
I would start with something very simple. So for sewing, I would consider a very simple top or a skirt. And for knitting, you can start with a hat or maybe scarf or a very simple sweater. Don't overwhelm yourself. That's totally unnecessary. Personally, I really like to get inspired by other creators. And I hope you are the same. In this case, I'm going to link a couple of amazing creators that have wonderful handmade wardrobes for you in the description box. Another wonderful source of inspiration if you like to sew is the Love to Sew podcast from Helen and Caroline. They have hundreds of different episodes covering different techniques and more general sewing topics and everything in between. I'm going to link it for you in the description box as well. And lastly, I'm going to insert a couple of pictures from my own handmade garments for you now. So this could be hopefully a source of inspiration for you as well. Like I said, it is not my personal goal to own a completely handmade wardrobe, but to do my very best and to swap out more and more store-bought pieces for handmade items. I also decided to take the handmade wardrobe thing a step further and also started natural dyeing a couple of years ago. So if natural yarn dyeing is something that you would like to give a try as well, I actually have a free guide that walks you through the eight steps of the natural yarn dyeing process in detail. I'm going to link this in the description box for you as well. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I have lots more videos on natural dyeing and creating a handmade wardrobe coming in the future. Bye guys.